a second there. Hey, Barry, how you doing, man? I'm good, Bob. How are you? Good to see all you guys and yeah. gals. Um, hey, uh, Blaine Tall, I guess, I don't know if he was ever actually at tight end because I guess he didn't get to work there, but he's back at DN now. I know you just had walkthroughs. How's he looked and how do you feel about him at, at DN? You know, it speaks volumes of really the, the type of person and really character and care for Arkansas on what Blaine has done. Uh, he said, you know, when, when coach approached him about moving over to um, help us out at tight end, he, he said, I'll do whatever I can for this team and this program, which is awesome. You don't find that much, especially with freshmen. And he did it and he went and dove in and, and was doing a great job on that side of the ball from everything that I'd heard. But then, um, you know, looked like he could really have a chance to go in and help us uh, in some situations on, on the defensive side. They got some things cleared up offensively uh, and allowed that to happen. Um, and he's done, a, a in what we've been able to see, a tremendous job. He's got a great motor. Um, I think he's got a, a huge upside on, on what he's going to become as a player. But also, he's, he's hungry to be really good. And, and uh, he's right now, and again, we've been in walkthroughs, but he's picked up what we're trying to do schematically, and, and, and he's doing it uh, really at a high speed. He's, he's got a lot of skills, just natural skills. Um, and, and since he's been here in January, has done a great job with Jamil and his staff in the weight room. Thanks. Thanks, Barry. Nikki? Coach, could you talk a little bit about Joe Fouché and where you see him best contributing? I know he hasn't obviously gotten to practice, but where do you see him being the best fit? You know, Joe has got um, a, a unique skill set because he's he's got tremendous speed and, and he's quick, but also, you know, he, he was, you know, I think he played quite a bit last year. Um, so he's got a little bit of experience, but also look at um, the things that you can do with Joe in coverage. You can move him down and, and put him in, in, in maybe the run fit in the box, so to speak, because he's, he's multiple enough and has enough skill set to him in the pass game and run game that, that uh, you can line him up in a lot of different spots. So we've got to continue to work to make sure, you know, that he's – um, going into, you know, practice number one, I'm anxious for those guys um, really to, to see how they fit in, in everything that we're trying to do on the field against, you know, at, at some point we're going to get a ball in the air and be able to see how we go work, you know, pass defense and some of those things. But Joe's got, uh, for a young player, um, he's, he's got some football savvy to him. Football IQ is, is high, and he's done a really good job of picking up what, what I'm asking him to do at that spot. Thank you. Hey, Coach. Um, Coach, Pitch, Coach Pittman has said that if for an unfortunate incident he gets COVID, that you would be the acting head coach for a certain game. How would that change your mindset going into a game, obviously with your defensive uh, responsibilities, but then would you just – let Kendall have the complete reins on, on offense as well, or would you kind of be back and forth with both? Well, uh, it's a good question, Trey. Number one, Coach Pittman's not going to get it. He's not going to – I can tell he's not going to get it. So, But also uh, credit to him on the things that he's done organizationally uh, on planning and putting us and moving our program forward every step of the way. He's done a heck of a job. And, you know, I'm fortunate – that we have the staff that we do because I, I think, you know, knock on wood, that, that's not going to happen. But if something like that were to happen, the staff is so great. We wouldn't, you know, I would be able to continue to uh, do the things we needed to on defense. And then obviously Kendall and I would spend a lot of time on going into that game on the management of what that looked like. And, uh, you know, you've got a plan for everything. I understand that. And Sam's done it. But uh, I don't know that it would change that much. I am fortunate that I've got the experience, in-game experience of, of uh, sitting in that chair for the last four years. So I think we'd be able to manage. And, uh, you know, it wouldn't happen without the staff that we have here in place for sure. Trey B. Hey, Coach. How you doing? What's up, Trey? I'm good, man. So Monday, at some point, you're going to have to put a starting 11 defense out there for the first day. And I know you got a lot to, to iron out what kind of structure you're going to do. But when you do that, what, what is it going to be? Is it a 4-2-5? Is it a 3-4? What does it look like? 
Yeah, I, I think uh, if you just look back more than anything at my history, uh, especially specifically when I was a coordinator, you know, we've been very multiple every place that I've been and every year, and that won't change this year. But you know, we've already got the scripts done for uh, Monday, at least defensively, and we'll we'll have a four down look. Um, but within that first series, we'll we'll be able to get into a number of different looks with those guys. So it'll be interchanging. I think we've got a number of pieces. We got so many competitive battles going on across the board, and I think a lot of that tray will will end up really dictating what what we call our base defense. But right now, uh, you know, from from an even to an odd front, you'd like to be able to do both of those uh, with the what we're seeing offensively matching, trying to match personnel down in distance, field position. You know, there's a lot of different ways that we can get to the structure, uh, both with an odd and even front and, and more than anything, trying to be multiple and staying ahead of, of what we're getting on the other side. Thanks, Coach. Coach? Yeah, Coach, uh, last week, uh, Coach Pittman was, was talking about how the defensive line was maybe – uh, a little bit better than what he had expected. What have you seen from that group? And, and is it, do you kind of have that same feeling that they're maybe a little bit further ahead than what you thought they'd be? Yeah, you know, I'm excited about uh, defensively. I'm excited about the way that they've handled from January until today. And there's been a lot of ups and downs. Uh, there's been some uncertainty at times, but not for the team. They, they've been, they've been laser like focused. They've kept blinders on and they've, they really just done everything that we've asked them to do, but that group specifically, you look at some of the weight gains that we've had, uh, some of the strength gains that we've had in 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 the weight room. You know, I can't give enough credit for to Jamil Walker and his staff in in the weight room on really transforming some of those guys, especially up front because it was a group that we didn't know you know didn't know a lot about a, a lot of a lot of the position groups, but I, I did think when we walked into the door watching us early in, you know, January and February, I thought we had some, some speed on defense. Um, I didn't know about up front, how we'd be able to hold up this because of physically where we are, were at that time, but man, they've, they've made a lot of ground up uh, and we still got a long ways to go, but, but, you know, I would echo the same thing that coach said. It's, it's a group that has surprised me uh, in a, in a good way. Um, now we also, you know, I want to caution that we've we've got plenty of work to do, but but they have they've done a, a really nice job here the last couple of months on trying to get SEC ready. Thanks, Coach. Tom. Hey, Barry. I'm wondering for the next couple of weeks, just the questions you want to see start being answered on your side of the ball, and then also how things are going to look differently uh, when you start picking up speed and putting pads on. Yeah, I mean, you know, we haven't haven't seen our guys in pads, so there's a lot of question marks there on um, what that'll look like, how we react, uh, what are we going to do when we give up? You know, it's hard to sit here and say it, but we're we're going to give up a touchdown sometime next week, would be my guess. How are we going to react to that? What's our mental focus and being able to put that play behind us and go play the next snap? What's that look like? You know, the it's. It's time we've we've done a lot of a lot of talking and they put in a lot of work, but let's let's go put it into action and, and kind of see how we respond, uh, see how well we can play together and communicate, um, and really the the elementary focus of playing good defensive football. You want to try to get the ball back, eliminate explosive plays. You want to be really good tackling a tackling team, which we're not going to be tackling here this first week, obviously, but also the physicality that it takes. Um, in this league is is a different standard. So, you know, we'll be able to see some of that early on, and I, and I look forward to that. Thank you. Russell? Coach, I wanted to get your thoughts on um, the job that Coach Pittman has done handling everything that's been thrown at him this year, you know, in, in year one as a head coach on this level. I, would, I, I can't really put it into words how impressed I've been with it. Um, he is, number one, he's created belief in our program. Um, and it's just the way that he is as a person. Uh, there's not anybody that's going to outwork him. Um, he always, the decisions he's making for the entire organization, it's for us to continue to move forward. You know, I, I felt similar ways on some of these things when I became a head coach. They don't, they don't give you a manual uh, on, hey, turn to page seven. This is how you handle the COVID. Uh, um, 
and and he's done a heck of a job and he's got a lot of really good people around him but you know leave no question we walk into the staff room he's got a clear plan on what he wants how he wants it and he's been able to put it in into play so i think above everything else you know it's the things that i've known about sam for 20 years you see come out and and him being a head coach and he's passionate he's got great energy he cares about the kids um and he's so deeply uh caring and energetic and passionate about the arkansas razorbacks thanks coach all right, we got time for two more. Terry Wood. Uh, hi, Coach Odom. Um, in the last couple of years, consistency in play on the defensive side of the football has been been an issue. Um, how how do you coach a team to to play consistently and and give that effort that's that's needed down after down? It comes down to it comes down to uh, great preparation and the habits, and you've got to. You've got to make sure that throughout the week, the game is is typically, you know, there's a lot of deciding going on in the game on how you prepare Sunday through the time the ball's kicked off. And, you know, if you have poor habits and if you don't prepare the right way, you're not absolutely on point in every area, uh, it's going to get exposed really quickly. And so more than anything, our habits, our film study, you know, the preparation that we have throughout the week, that's going to, that will give us an opportunity uh, to line up and go play. And then the understanding, I've got to make it simple enough for our team and be a good enough teacher along with the defensive staff that, that we put our guys in position that they can go play fast and they have an understanding on where they have help, where they don't, when they can take their shots, when they can't. Uh, but collectively playing 11 guys, playing with great speed, energy, passion, effort, getting to the ball, trying to eliminate explosive plays as I was talking about, and you know, finding ways to get the ball back for our offense. I mean, those are things that we've got to continue to focus on and build on. And also the understanding of, of the mental toughness that it takes throughout the course of a four quarter game to, to withstand, because they, you know, the other team's got good players and they're gonna, they're gonna make some plays. Um, I'm gonna make some bad calls and our, our guys have got to make me right. But it's the trust in each other, but also knowing that that happens throughout the week. And it's been building since January for us. It's got to continue. Mike Irwin, you're the last one for Coach Odom. Uh, Coach Odom, uh, Coach Pittman in a previous Zoom had said there might be, because of what's going on right now, fewer scrimmages. But he said, we've got guys that know how to teach tackling through drills. Could you – Explain that a little bit and what your plan would be to make sure everybody can tackle if you don't actually have as much scrimmaging. Yeah, you look at there's a number of ways. Um, you know, the best way to continue to become a better tackling team is to understand how to you can play fast. That's understanding of the defense, but also the point of, of a, I don't know when the last time you see just a true, pure how you teach a form tackle. Most of the tackles happen with your playing your leverage point, you're using the angles correctly, you're pressing a line of scrimmage, you've got two guys that are vicing the ball. So everything that we try to do in our individual drills, whether it's it's form tackling uh, one-on-one, whether it's pass coverage, whether it's rushing the passer, everything that we're trying to structure in our individual drills should look exactly like what our guys at that position would do on game day. And then get them drilled so much that it's repetition and it becomes monotonous but then that's when you start making up positive ground is when you go out and the habits just become so natural um, that, that that's how you play. That's the DNA of your defense. Tackling is, is obviously something um, to anyone that watches a game, you know, you can, you can say, well, they're, they're a good tackling team or, or, or they're not. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't take uh, a lot of football experience to notice that. I know that that the the greatest teams that I've been on as far as playing team defense have been really good tackling teams, and we've got to make sure that we're smart with how we do that. Like Coach is talking about, you know. Also, I want to make sure that we get our best guys to the first game, and so you got to be smart in in how you practice. But we've got a, a group of guys defensively on the staff that we feel like we've got a good idea on on how we need to approach that. Um, and you know, it's, we haven't been in pads, so, um, it'll be interesting. Like I was saying earlier, how we withstand some of the physical nature of, of what it takes, but 
again, we've got to be great teachers, whether it's on how to tackle, whether it's how to run the zone blitz, whether it's how to play Tampa two, we've got to do a great job on, on teaching our kids how to, how to play and how to play fast. All right. That's going to wrap us up for coach Odom. Thanks guys. I appreciate your coverage of our program. Let me go get Coach Bryles and we'll uh, we'll get going with him. Hold on just a sec.